From the ancient Polynesians to ancestors hired as sugar plantation laborers, to the farmers and egg industry workers of today, many immigrants to these islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean have had a close relationship with agriculture. I can imagine uh, many, many years ago, 100 years ago, when there were no fruit flies, what a luscious Garden of Eden Hawaii must have been. But since 1898, when the melon fly first came in, we've had a succession of fruit flies, which has really decimated the ability of the uh, local population to realize its real fruit growth potential. Well, I can remember when I was uh, a young boy, you know, we used to have peaches, loquats, that you know, we didn't have to worry about fruit flies. And probably the last, what, 40 years maybe, and we started having this major problem with, with fruit flies. Some of the damages were phenomenal. When the fruit fly discovered where these crops are grown, they just attack it. And you can see a drop from 600 uh, cartons per acre down to 60. They steadily increased to the point where uh, it was 100% loss and the economic value just made a stop planting for those four months. We were hit by the fruit flies so bad that at one point, um, especially our peaches, we couldn't even use any of them. It was just zero. I mean, there was just not one good peach on the tree. We share some of the persimmons, but about um, one fourth we just have to throw away. Then the birds get after one fourth, and we get on a half. Of the half, really only about half of that is good, you know. But um, yeah, we'd like to share more. Hawaii's unique climate enables nearly any crop to be grown here locally. Yet, in spite of this, Hawaii imports much of its commodities from the mainland USA. Fruit flies are the primary reason behind Hawaii's limited local production, dependency on import shipments, and limited export markets. With subsequent arrivals of the Mediterranean, Oriental, and Malaysian fruit flies, joining the melon fly, these insects are some of the most damaging agricultural pests in Hawaii. They infest more than 400 varieties of fruits and vegetables, greatly affecting the profitability of many farms throughout the state. Local backyard growers and gardeners have also endured disappointing harvests due to fruit fly infestations. There are several obstacles to suppressing fruit fly populations in Hawaii. Our climate allows for year-round production of not only crops, but insects and weed pests as well. Also, with many small acreage farmers and urban backyard gardeners in close proximity, fruit fly suppression in one location will not have a sustainable impact on the environment without an area-wide or collaborative effort. This video production is about a new area-wide fruit fly suppression program that might help solve Hawaii's fruit fly problem. The goal of the Hawaii Area-Wide Fruit Fly Pest Management Program is to use proven tactics to achieve fruit fly suppression in an environmentally friendly manner. For example, it's as simple as one, two, three, and four. Population monitoring, field sanitation, protein bait sprays, and male annihilation. If the goal is to suppress populations even further, then sterile insects and parasitoid insects are added as additional tactics. I think the area-wide approach is very important in controlling the fruit flies. In many cases, uh, the fruit flies will breed in the variety of fruits and vegetables which are just outside uh, a homeowner's house or in an adjacent homeowner's house. Those uh, fruits and vegetables which are grown in or nearby homeowner locations represent a huge reservoir where the flies could be breeding and very adversely af uh, affect commercial growers even miles away. One of the most important aspects of the Hawaii Airwide Fruit Fly Pest Management Program is identifying which fruit fly species is infesting your crop and then monitoring the population numbers. You need to know which of these species are present and how big the problem is in order to determine which suppression technique to utilize. The trap catchers are used to monitor the, the number of fruit flies in an area or the changes over a time period. First you identify which fly you're going to target and then 
after you figure out which fly you, you're going to target, then you set out the lure. Each lure will attract a certain species. Fruit fly lures are very specific. The Q lure will attract male melon flies. Uh, methyl eugenol will attract male oriental fruit flies. Latilor and cate oil will attract male Malaysian or solanaceous fruit flies. And trimedlor will attract male Mediterranean fruit flies. The male lures will attract the male flies to your property, but the male flies are the ones that do not cause any damage to your fruit. It's the females that will lay eggs in your fruit and damage your fruit. In addition to using your own traps, you can also use traps that are currently on the market. This is a bilure trap. In the trap, I have three inserts. These are the attractants that will attract the fruit flies. You need all three of these inserts for the trap to be effective. It doesn't take much time to put it on. There's no dangerous chemicals. All you have to do is stick it inside the cover. There are many non-pesticidal ways which homeowners can use to um, uh, control the fruit flies. They can control the fruit flies by uh, having a, a panel which is covered with a sticky substance where the flies will just stick and land on, on these panels. You can always use soapy water uh, as a reservoir where the flies will come to the attractants and, and eventually drown in the soapy water. That's another non-pesticidal way of uh, killing the insects. And here's the three as far as uh, replacing the attractants in the uh, trap, we're, uh, the agents, uh, the agent came to our home and demonstrated how it was done and well, they let us the do bottle, it ourselves so bottom. we get to know how to do it on hand and rather than just showing us how to it. do it. And uh, it, was, it was no problem once, once you do it. We usually recommend a minimum of three traps per area. Keep in mind that placement of the traps will differ according to the species of fruit flies you want to manage. Okay. For oriental and Mediterranean fruit flies, the traps are placed on or near the fruit trees. For melon fruit flies, the traps are placed on roosting hosts in borders that surround the field. The second step of the fruit fly IPM program is nearly as important as monitoring. Sanitation, in this case, means preventing the survival of fruit fly eggs or larvae by the disposal of infested fruits. What is good sanitation? Well, this would be uh, things like either uh, disking uh, uh, fruit that's been damaged or left in the field, uh, uh, burying it in a pit, uh, uh, gathering up the damaged fruit, putting it in bags and having it uh, carried away. Uh, there's a number of different approaches to this, but basically it involves uh, removing damaged fruit that serves as a reservoir for uh, fruit fly uh, development and reinfestation of fields. One of the most important activities is if everyone in the, in the community picked up their rotten fruit, there wouldn't be an explosion of fruit fly population. That's where the fruit flies are coming from. And you, as you can see, all my vacant fields are clean. We don't have, I don't have the old fields hanging around. As soon as I'm done, I try to get there, till it up, put it under the ground. The big thing is, is the uh, hygiene, that because uh, like we were educated, the more things lay around, the more they have places to hatch and to, to lay eggs. Uh, we started to clean up much more, which I always did, and luckily because we do have uh, use for the fruits which are on the ground, which we feed the pigs with it. <laughs> They enjoy that, naturally. The technique of choice for handling any kind of damage has been pesticide, but we need to break that cycle. It has been proven over the years, the pesticides can't get at the larvae. An exciting development in the area of lures and agents to eliminate fruit flies is the GF120 protein bait. It's a food attractant which is combined with a very safe insecticide, for humans that is, called spinoset. Protein bait food attractants are different from some of the other lures in that it attracts both male and female flies. 
Previously, when only uh, organophosphate bait sprays were available, there was tremendous concern in Hawaii for uh, 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 negative effects on not only humans, but also on non-target uh, insects. Well, the GF120 was formulated to get around uh, uh, these two major impediments to use of, of bait sprays and area-wide fruit fly control. Yeah, we had a lot of fruit flies. We, we sprayed uh, GF120, and that, that brought the fruit fly population down to like zero. Well, not, nothing was really effective against fruit flies before yeah. this program came. There has been some um, cost reduction uh, and some pesticide use reduction. Uh, we've moved away from the organophosphates and some of the other more harsh uh, compounds to something that's more uh, environmentally friendly. Uh, the, the harsher compounds are um, are our thing of the past, and we do need to move eventually off to uh, these uh, less uh, uh, environmental risky compounds. And they seem to be doing the job. Male annihilation might be an unsettling title for the males in the viewing audience, but we're talking about just fruit fly males here. If you cut down the number of male fruit flies, it follows that there'll be fewer mating opportunities, and hence less fruit fly offspring. Male annihilation uses the same attractive lures as we do in monitoring. In this case here, we use so many traps that we deplete the number of males in the area. If you kill off the males for their mate, then there are very few females that have sperm. Female flies have to mate before they can lay fertile eggs. And with so few males, we really would reduce the population. You know, this would result in many females not mating and laying infertile eggs. Now what, what they found is that if you use some suppression strategies, now the suppression strategies would be things like bait sprays and uh, male annihilation, that you can tackle areas with large populations and the, the approach is to suppress the population down to relatively uh, low numbers and then apply the uh, sterile insect technique to either get eradication or area-wide control. The SIT technique has been used successfully to eradicate fruit flies in several parts of the world by minimizing opportunities for fruit fly reproduction. SIT stands for sterile insect technique. The idea there is to mass produce the, the, the fly and then uh, sterilize it while it's in the pre-adult stage, usually in the pupil stage, and then find a way to, to release them into the field where the sterile males will hopefully inseminate wild females and sterilize them. One of the strengths of the, of the technique is, is the fact that you're using the species to turn against itself. And because it, a fly, as it were, can think like a fly, it can maybe better than we can, it can actually hopefully find where the little pockets of wild flies are. And, and try to make the most of when we release smaller numbers. You know, they can go out searching and uh, hopefully get into areas that, that, uh, where we might not be able to bait spray or, and where it would the effect on the environment, of course, is, is a lot, lot less. It's not a chemical release, it's a biological release. And the biological release is of a, another insect that it, it only licks you. It doesn't do any sting damage. It doesn't attack any of the fruit. It doesn't attack any of the species. They're only males. They'll die out because there's no other females. It's a very short-lived, one month, maybe a month and a half, and it's um, very specialized. It's not a chemical. So all those factors make it very safe. So uh, the sterile insect technique with fruit flies has kind of formed um, the cornerstone for uh, suppression and eradication of small numbers of of fruit flies when they get into the United States and it has also been useful in eradicating uh, uh, fruit flies from some uh, small Pacific islands. Another suppression technique uses one kind of insect, parasitic wasps, against its natural enemy, the fruit flies. Although some of the wasps have been introduced, they are fairly specific to certain fruit flies. And perhaps more importantly, 
They don't harm humans in any way. Because the parasites have the ability to search and look for the fruit flies, if the fly population goes up, we inject or we bring in the parasites too. Surprise it down. Well, parasitoid is a natural enemy of fruit flies, but uh, it's beneficial insect first, and uh, the parasitoid is something that entomologists use to refer to those insects that attack other insects. But it is important in our work because with the increased use of natural enemies, we can use that in a way to lower the population of flies to cut back on the amount of insecticides that would be required. They have the capability of distributing in areas where probably sprays cannot be applied. They have the capability of flying to uh, tall trees or host of fruit flies. We have found that uh, uh, the use of, uh, of uh, sterile insects in combination with uh, parasitoids is, produces a much greater effect in suppression of, of the fruit fly than if you use either technology by, by itself. When you put them together, you get a synergistic effect. Uh, we are finding that by releasing parasitoids on top of the sterile insects that you, you put tremendous pressure on the fruit fly, which is, has, has uh, been very exciting to us. Now that you've heard about the program and what it involves, perhaps the question on your mind is, does it really work? Or is it worth the effort to control fruit flies? Let's go back to hear from our farmer and gardener program participants for some of their impressions. And then your program came into, you know, conception. And, you know, I started to learn a lot about it, you know. And through the practices that I've learned from the program, you know, I've been able to control the problem and as well as the fruit fly population. It's a 100% turnaround. Uh, I've, I've been doing this for a year without uh, interruptions, whereas I stopped any plantings. And so far, uh, I'm happy with the program. And I've learned quite a bit from the program. I had a great results, you know, good harvest. Uh, and I wasn't doing it on a big scale, but the marketing, it was so much zucchini, there was just, at one point I had like, you know, I was harvesting in a smallest amount, it was 15, 20 cases a day, every other day, and three times a week. Before we had that program uh, on food fries uh, going, uh, we were spraying almost every week uh, with uh, insecticide after fruiting. So, uh, when the program was implemented, uh, we noticed that there was a reduction. The growers who are doing all the steps, they're the ones who make it money. Sanitation, the protein bait sprays, and the male annihilation, uh, they're the most serious guys. We've seen that the program has worked in our experimental sites and produced good results. What are some of the possibilities that could happen if this program is instituted on a wider scale what kinds of changes in Hawaii's agricultural industry and backyard gardens might we see? The suppression program for fruit flies can lead to several different levels of success. Uh, you have the success that could occur just in a slight increase in production, that is less damage to the fruits. You can have uh, success in terms of uh, beneficial uh, results for backyard growers, more fruits to give to your friends, more fruits to eat in your backyard. Uh, you also have uh, uh, opportunities for export in different ways. Uh, one way to do that is through the expansion of, of uh, production, uh, value-added products, products which are unique to uh, Hawaii marketplaces that could be used and does not have to rely on the fresh product per se. Hawaii could really become a, a mecca for tropical, both tropical and subtropical fruit production. And it would really open up, open up the way for export markets. I think maybe more people will go into farming because it will be more worthwhile for them. Farming might become uh, one of the third or fourth leading industries for us here. I think the, the acreage will significantly increase, um, not only here on Oahu, I think it might create, um, it will create an excitement that 
someone is doing it already, here is a market, here's a route. There'll be more production locally and then we don't have to import so much. It's a shame to, you know, have all this good crop and not be able to have the markets full of them, you know? Mm -hmm. When you think about that, the farmers who grow vegetables and um, fruits, if they have less expense for uh, the care of the products, um, maybe they can sell their things more cheaply, you know? We should really support them. With seeing how potentially this program can go, now it opens that idea that, okay, there's no, no longer a shuttered gate to Hawaii, that we can now look at potentially exporting. So that's the kind of um, um, mind-lifting, I, I guess, mind-lifting potential that we can see from the program. Since the program has been so successful in our experimental sites, we like to extend its positive results to other areas and communities throughout the state. As you've seen, we're gathering momentum, but we need the active participation of Hawaii's growers, backyard gardeners, businesses, communities, and multi-agency groups to continue. Fruit fly suppression is possible, but our future depends on your involvement and support. The fruit fly is being a very mobile insect. It's not a matter of just individuals being educated, but really communities being educated so that um, there's a need for everybody to basically do their part to control the fruit flies on their property so they're not contributing to problems on other farms. By far the biggest challenge is changing the attitudes of the community. Homeowners have lived with fruit flies for so long that they learn to accommodate these pests. You'll be surprised at how rapid word gets around a farming community. When it happens, they'll be more willing to cooperate. Uh, it, it takes a lot of cooperation between a lot of different farmers to do an area-wide. Of course, uh, my neighbors have to uh, get involved, so I'm spreading the word around. So we try to control it you know, within a given area anyway. And uh, we yeah, UH agents come around periodically to give us advice, which is very helpful. I think this program will, will help. So again, I think it's very important that the, the community understands the importance of this program. I think that if the program continues, that uh, uh, the homeowners uh, need to have the correct tools and that there needs to be an education program so that they understand at all different levels how important this is. One concern is, is one that there is still a lot of people in the farm community mm -hmm. that is so tainted by what's happening in Pan, they say, this is not going to happen. There's no way. Good luck. You know? And I think that attitude, if it's among the farmers, I'm afraid it might be among some of the politicians who make some decisions here. Um, that that it's not going to happen, here's just a token dollar to, to keep it going. I hope that is not the case. I hope that they see that it can happen and support the program. Now that you know a little more about the Food Fly problem, the Hawaii Area-Wide Food Fly Pest Management Program, and the potential of Food Fly Free Suppression Zone, we'd like to ask for your help to make this dream come true. Remember, Food Fly Suppression is possible if everyone contributes and gets involved. There's a potential for the entire state of Hawaii to benefit if our agricultural economy grows. We're all in this together, and we need your help to create a better Hawaii. It's my impression that the, that the program has been very successful. And I think that, that uh, my feelings are mirrored by um, the, the data that we've taken to show that it's been successful. Also, the comments from our collaborators uh, have all shown, have all shown that the, the, the program up till now has been successful. One has to realize, however, that we've just taken a microchasm or a few areas out of a total area that uh, represents quite a bit of land in the state of Hawaii. Well, in order to take this program forward, I, I, I believe that the, the researchers have addressed most of the technical aspects of the program in terms of how, how to suppress the fruit flies. The biggest hurdle, I think, will be the, the, the 
public's reaction to uh, a suppression or eradication program. And I think it's going to be very important that we have a very well coordinated educational program and an outreach program so that people can understand uh, the, the benefits of the program and, what, when, and the risk involved in the program so that they can uh, have an informed uh, basis for uh, reacting to the, what will be proposed for, for suppression or eradication of, of the fruit flies in Hawaii. Hawaii has been under federal fruit fly quarantine for over 50 years and um, as a result we cannot simply ship product to the U.S. mainland. It has to be subject to a post-harvest quarantine treatment and these treatments are now largely in place for the types of fresh fruits and vegetables we're, we're producing in Hawaii. What the area-wide fruit fly suppression program will do for us is make it possible for us to produce product in larger quantity of a higher quality product at a lower risk of infestation or fruit fly damage that would be even more attractive for consumers and wholesalers and retailers in U.S. mainland markets to carry our product. I see this particular program as a blueprint for how the University of Hawaii, the USDA Agricultural Research Service, uh, and the state of Hawaii, and also private industry to collaborate to make sure that pest problems and opportunities in agriculture are not being reduced but go forward and grow because we have a tremendous opportunity here in Hawaii in the area of diversified agriculture and ARS and I'm sure the university as well as the State Department of Agriculture they all want to be major players and by collaborating we can do this. Everybody knows that theoretically you can read anything you want but why can't you read anything you want? These lousy fruit flies just attack it. Well, if we can make it, in my lifetime at least, where, my gosh, we don't have to worry about fruit fly. You know, Hawaii is called a paradise. Hawaii would be a paradise in agriculture. My God, we can grow anything. And with this fruit fly's control, I think then the possibility of raising things, exporting things, making food cheaper, making so that people can just grow things in the backyard, this is unlimited. And you know, I tell you, if this thing worked, it would have been all because of this area wide setting the stage for this. So we have to go step by step by step. Each of the collaborative partners of the Hawaii Area Wide Fruit Fly Pest Management Program are committed to developing a sustainable suppression program. To get involved, visit our website or call us to learn about workshops or demonstrations in your area. We really need your involvement to make the dream of a fruit fly free Hawaii a reality.